Today, I'm gonna to be ranking the 10 ultimate blue fragrances in my collection, the most versatile everyday fragrances. And what is a blue fragrance, you ask? Well, I'm so glad you asked. A blue fragrance is just a really, really sad fragrance. Bruh. Well, hey everybody, if you're still with me, welcome to the channel. My name is Scott Aromatico. Thank you so much for being here today. I love to have fun on this channel and I love to talk all things fragrances. And that's right, as you can tell from the thumbnail, if that didn't give it away, my introduction surely gave it away. And we're gonna be talking about my 10 ultimate blue fragrances. I'm gonna, I'm gonna rank them from 10 all the way down to one. That's something I hardly ever do on this channel, only because I just can't count. I mean, who am I kidding? I can't count to 10. But uh, anyways, we're gonna give it a shot. So hit that thumbs up button so that I can make it all the way to 10. But in case you were wondering, what are blue fragrances? If you're brand new to the channel, welcome. But what a blue fragrance is, and I didn't know this at all either when I first uh, journeyed down the rabbit hole that is fragrances. A blue fragrance is basically any kind of fragrance that invokes something blue, like the sky or the ocean but mainly it's more oceanic than anything. You know, it's a fragrance that kind of smells like a nice sea breeze. They tend to have a lot of things in common. They're either gonna have like ambergris or amber wood or amber in the ingredients. You're gonna find something fresh in there like citrus. You're also gonna find some lavender in there as well. And there's gonna be some woody aspects as well like cedar and things like that that really just make it a blue fragrance. Basically, it's very fresh, it's mass appealing. You know, it's one of those fragrances you don't have to think about. You can just reach over and grab it. You know when you spray it on, everybody's gonna like the way you smell. You're gonna like it. It's just mass appealing and easy to reach for. I reach, I'm reach, whatever you refer to it is, it's basically just a mass appealing fragrance that can be worn for any occasion, everywhere, anytime, any place. And that's basically what a blue fragrance is. And most of the time they're gonna have blue in the title, but not all the time. And they may even have a blue bottle, but also not all the time. So, you know, blue fragrance is just basically a very fresh, mass appealing fragrance. And with that out of the way, if you're still with me, which I know you are, let's go ahead. It's better if I just explain the very first fragrance. That way you know exactly what a blue fragrance is. And the first blue fragrance we have is red to the, what? No, oh, sorry. <laughs> Whoops, how did that get in there? The first blue fragrance we're gonna be talking about today is this one right here, this offering from Mont Blanc. This is called Legend. Now, just think of Abercrombie and Fitch Fierce and you pretty much have this fragrance, but I still think this fragrance stands on its own and it's just slightly different than Abercrombie and Fitch Fierce, but there are a lot more similarities than there are differences but I love this fragrance. Now why? Why would I own this fragrance over Abercrombie and Fitch Fierce? Well, because this one's really, really cheap. And I think that one might be too. If you find this in discounters in the box stores, you're gonna find it for a very good price. If you look online like Fragrance Net or Fragrance X, this is gonna be for an amazing price. And for that reason, it made the list at coming in at number 10. And what I love about this fragrance is the lavender. There's some pineapple in here, some apple, some sweetness coming from that tonka, giving it an almost like vanillic scent. And to my nose, there's some ambroxan in here, although it's not listing the ingredients, but it really feels like there's a lot of ambroxan in this fragrance. And for that reason, it just really, it also just kind of invokes me back to my childhood, but I just like this one. And this one's done really, really well because it spawned so many flankers. So this one came in at number 10. At number nine, this is an absolute amazing fragrance. My wife loves these handbooks, and I'm sure if any of you have significant others, they like these, these pocketbooks and handbooks as well. This is called Coach for Men. I love this fragrance. The opening is amazing because I love the notes of grapefruit. I really love the top opening of grapefruit. Then you mix that with juicy pear, and you've got this unique kumquat note that almost gives it like a citrusy, piney-like feeling. And you're left with that soothing lavender. You've got that beautiful, nice smell of ambergris. You've got amber wood, which you're gonna find those in two ingredients in a lot of these fragrances. And then as it starts to dry down, you're gonna get those suede undertones. But don't be afraid. I know a lot of you folks do not like wearing suede or leather in the spring and summer. They're very, very soft. They're not in your face. So this fragrance works perfect for the spring and summer. And honestly, this fragrance, all these fragrances work all year round. They're really 
that versatile and could be worn for every day. My only gripe with this one is it doesn't last that long on my skin. It doesn't project all that well, but I get about four to five hours on my skin with this one. Man, I wish it lasted a lot longer. I wish they'd make a better concentration of this because it smells so fantastic. And it's just, it's another one of those fragrances that you can get for an amazing price. This is number nine, Coach Ferment. All right, guys, next fragrance. One of those polarizing fragrances in Fragcom. A lot of women will tell you they don't like it. A lot of guys will say they don't like it, but then you'll find a whole lot that say they do. Let me all hear you say it out loud before I even pull it up at number eight. That's right, Dior Sauvage. This is one of those fragrances that changed the game. We all know this fragrance because of that beautiful man right there, Johnny Depp. That guy is amazing. He really, really set this company on fire, kind of kind of almost in the same way that I think Jordan did for Nike. I think Johnny Depp really helped put Dior on the map, in my opinion. Now that could be up for debate, we can argue that. But this fragrance right here is the ultimate, and you can see the dent I've got in it. So it's time to re-up. I'm definitely gonna get another bottle. One, because my wife really loves the way this smells on me, and she likes the way it smells on her. It's pretty much a unisex fragrance, in my opinion. Um, she loves it so much. I love the bergamot on the top. Really a mood enhancing note with that bergamot. You get those slightly spicy notes coming from the Szechuan pepper and coming from the pepper. You get a nice freshness coming from the pink pepper. And then you get that, that burst of lavender and broxen and cedar. This one is so good. And if you're looking for a fragrance that lasts during the spring and summertime, Dior Sauvage goes eight plus hours on my skin. I do not have the problem with Dior Sauvage on performance like I did for Coach for Men. But still, this fragrance is amazing. I think it still plays today. I think it's still a great seller. But again, it's one of those fragrances that invokes a lot of passion in the fragrance community. So for that reason, it's number eight on the list. Number seven on the list. I love this fragrance. It is so good. I think it's really, really hard to find. It may be discontinued. I don't know. Comment down below if you guys know for 100% sure this fragrance is discontinued. We're talking about Bulgari Aqua Atlantique. Love this one. Wow, this one is so good. When I think of Aqua Atlantique, I think of like, it kind of reminds me of Dillon Blue with some C notes added. That's what it reminds me of. Now, I've heard in the comments before, I've been in some groups where people say this has got a fishy scent, not on my skin. It smells absolutely intoxicating. I love the citrus on the top, a lot of zesty lemon a lot of fresh aquatic notes. There's some sea notes in here giving it a saltiness. I think that's where people are, are kind of getting that fishy vibe is from those sea notes. And then as this starts to dry down, the ambergris and the amber wood really help give this a smooth warming sensation. I love this fragrance. I get about six to eight hours on my skin in the summertime and uh, people really comp compliment me on this one. And I just really love this one. It's one of my favorite blue fragrances. Number six. The fragrance that Jeremy Fragrance told me about, that's when I jumped into this uh, community, really didn't know much about it. I knew about the original. He said this was better than the original and I tend to agree with him. This one right here, this is Dolce & Gabbana, Light Blue Intense by Alberto Marias. Love this fragrance, so good. It's been hyped to death. Everybody knows about it. You've got that beautiful grapefruit opening. It's aquatic, it's musky, there's amberwood and another fragrance for the spring and summer with great performance. I really get eight hours on my skin with this one. It smells so good. The scent bubble is huge. Every time I wear it, somebody says something to me about what I'm wearing and uh, they just really want to know <laughs> where to get it. And I love this fragrance. It's so fresh, it's so aquatic. And Alberto Marias is one of my favorite perfumers in the whole perfuming world. This one is so good, guys. It's one of my favorite blues. And so for that reason, it's coming in at number six. All right, guys, stay with me. Only five more to go. We talked about this one already. This is another beauty from Versace. This one is called Dylan Blue. Man, I love this one. It's got that grapefruit opening, which I absolutely love. I know I'm repeating myself, but it's just so fresh and aquatic, slightly spicy, not too much. A lot of Ambroxan, musky, some incense and vanilla coming from that Tonka. Man, this one is so good. I get about six hours on my skin. It's so smooth and so fresh. This fragrance is so good because I feel like you can really wear the hell out of this in the wintertime because of the vanilla and the incense, but then you can also get away with wearing it in the summertime because it's just so fresh. 
I love Versace. They really know how to do really great fragrances and they're not all that expensive on discounters. So I love this one. This one's coming in at number five. And this is a flanker of a very, very amazing fragrance. And this one, maybe I could put this one in the video as well. It's a flanker of this guy right here. This is Versace Four Ohm. I love this fragrance and I know you guys do too. It's a lot of citrus, it's aquatic, it's musky. But this is the flanker and I put this one on the list. I could have very easily snuck this in and if you guys want to, we can call it an honorable mention. But Dylan Blue is coming in at number five. All right guys, number four, here we are. This one is YSL Y. One of my favorite fragrances in my collection. I just love everything about this fragrance. I know I have a ton of blue fragrances and I have way more than 10 guys. There's so many fragrances I could have put on this list, but I don't think you would have stayed for the whole video. YSL Y, and this is the Eau de Parfum version. It's just absolutely amazing. I love that crisp green apple note right out of the gate. And then it mixes with that Tonka and you get that apple and vanilla. And I know that's been done to death, but then you get punched with that, that ginger. And it's got this very aromatic feel with the juniper berry. You got that nice amber wood and Tonka and cedar. And like I said, I really, really get some good performance out of this fragrance. It's one of my favorites. I bought this actually during the pandemic to one of the only department stores that was open in my whole town. Went in there and blind bought this and it was absolutely worth every penny. I love this fragrance. It's so versatile, it's so sexy. This one came in at number four, YSL's Y, Eau de Parfum. All right guys, getting down to the final three. Let's see if you agree with any of these choices. Let me know in the comments down below. Coming in at number three, this is from Ferragamo. This bad boy right here. Learned about this fragrance from Ross over at TLTG Review. Shout out to him. He is a workhorse and growing fast. Guys, this one is amazing. Aqua Essential Blue. Wow, what can I say? It's got a lot of lemon, a lot of citrus, a lot of lavender. Very earthy, which I like. It helps balance out that sweetness from the lavender and the citrus. Then it becomes very woody. It's sweet from the, from the Tonka. And then you've got a lot of Ambroxan that gives this some staying power. I love this fragrance is very, very well priced on discounters. And because of the price point and because how long this lasts on my skin, I know a lot of you don't get the same longevity, but I get eight plus hours easily. This one projects. Every time I wear it, my wife says, what are you wearing? She always stops me and asks, what is that? And I always have to tell her, it's this one right here. I am definitely refilling this bottle once it runs out, guys. This one is so good. Coming in at number three, Aqua Essential Blue. All right guys, just learned about this fragrance not too long ago. I saw a lot of you talking about it in the groups. I know Ross talks about it. I know a lot of people love this fragrance. Finally got it and it's coming in at number two. This is Home Rokas, this is Loam. Love, love, love this fragrance. This does not remind me of a lot of fragrances I have in my collection, okay? I love the opening with the blood orange. I love the pineapple note. Then you get that aromatic feel from the juniper. The juniper is so nice. It really clings to my skin. And then you get that nice sweetness from the Tonka. Very warming to me with amber, although I don't see any ingredients, but I really feel like there's some sort of amber or amber wood in the ingredients that's warming this up and making this nice and woody. This fragrance is so good. It's one of my favorites and also very affordable. I think I got this for like under 40 bucks. And to me, this smells like a million bucks. I love it. It's just so good. It's simple, but yet also has, you know, a little bit of artistry to it, in my opinion. Um, it's so good. So for me, this one is coming in at number two, Rokas Loam. All right, guys, last but not least, if you've made it this long, thank you so much. You know which one it's gonna be. It's the perfect 10 out of 10 fragrance. It's a masterpiece. It's Blue de Chanel Parfum. I love this one. I've talked about this one in so many videos. Zesty lemon, lots of pineapple, mint, lavender, creamy sandalwood, cedar, amberwood, iso e, and that vanillic on the base coming from the Tonka. This one is amazing. It's so versatile. It's a 10 out of 10. It is my favorite. I love it. What do you guys feel about this one? I love the Parfum version. We can debate about which version is better, but I love the Parfum because it's just so smooth and just so elegant. And so there you have it, guys. That is my top 10 blue fragrances ranked just for you. Now I'd love to hear your top 10 down in the comments below. Let me know what are some of your favorites. Let me know where I went right. Let me know where I got it wrong. 
It's okay. I love to hear from you guys. If you got any value from the video whatsoever, please leave a thumbs up. If you'd love to be a part of my fragrance family, it doesn't cost you a dime. Hit that subscribe button down below. Hit the bell notifications off to the side, and I'll see you in the next video. This is Scott Aromatico.